I, you know, I want to say real quick, uh, anybody who follows our ministry online, I want you to understand something about this ministry and about this church. We are a fully LGBT affirming ministry. That means LGBT believers who sincerely seek to know the Lord, to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord, are welcome not only in our church, but they are fully included. Uh, there is no aspect of our ministry that they are not able to participate in. We do not believe that LGBT issues are a matter of choice that people choose quote unquote a lifestyle no you choose a lifestyle but being gay or being transgender or whatever the case might be uh, is not a lifestyle and therefore it is not a matter of choice it is a uh, orientation it is part of our human nature for whatever reason some want to argue nature others want to argue nurture it matters not amen the word of god the lord himself said concerning eunuchs that some are born that way and some are made that way so there's your nature and nurture argument right there some are uh, a certain way for one reason and others are a certain way for another reason there is no simple one-size-fits-all answer when it comes to issues as serious and as complex as uh, gay, lesbian, or transgender orientation uh, or experience. And we welcome all people, and they are fully included in every aspect of our ministry, unlike churches that uh, call themselves welcoming we do not say oh yes you're welcome here but you're welcome to sit on the pew and do nothing and not at all participate you can't be you know a deacon you can't be an usher you can't be anything but you're welcome to attend and we certainly welcome you putting your money in our offering plate that is not how this ministry operates but I also want to go a step further and explain to you. People who watch our ministry online, uh, I've had a number of people over the years say, Pastor, you remind me a lot, you know, of the church I grew up in, or you remind me of the pastor I grew up with. And I want to tell you something, folks. I don't believe for one minute that LGBT believers are held to a different standard than our non-LGBT believers. Now, all of God's people are held to the same standard. God asks us to live godly lives. He asks us to live holy lives. He asks us to live consecrated lives. And he does so in order that we might reflect his nature. And in reflecting his nature, we are helping to demonstrate to the world that the grace of God is powerful. It is powerful enough to separate us so that while we are in the world, we are not of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we are called to be light. And light cannot look like darkness. It's impossible. You can't possibly be light and look like darkness. No, there is a stark contrast between light and darkness, and so it ought to be in the life of believers. Some people might wonder, you know, Pastor Charles, unlike many LGBT affirming churches I know, you don't preach every Sunday a message on LGBT issues. That's right, I certainly don't. Uh, we are not an LGBT church, so to speak. We are an LGBT inclusive and affirming church. By that I mean, we believe all God's people, straight, gay, cross-eyed, and bow-legged, all God's people stand on the same level ground. We're all together in this thing. 
We're all called to live it the same way. We're all called to pursue uh, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the same fashion. And I'm not about, you know, bringing LGBT, LGBT people into the church so that we then can create some kind of a church hybrid or some kind of a uh, special quote unquote niche church for LGBT people. No, we're part of God's church, period. And as part of God's church, period, when you walk into our church, you start out with the premise from the word go that whether you're straight, gay, or whoever you are, you are welcome, you are affirmed, you are on equal ground with every other believer. And therefore, when I preach, I preach for the benefit of all God's people, regardless of orientation, regardless of life experience, regardless of uh, the important issues that you may face in your life, including the transgendered issue, which we absolutely understand and affirm. Okay, so I just want people to understand that. A lot of people are so accustomed to uh, LGBT affirming churches really being all about, you know, from the minute you walk in till the minute you leave, everything's about being LGBT. That is not this church. This church is about being a Christian and Amen. living for God and being full of the Holy Ghost and experiencing the fullness of God's blessing in your life, walking in the power of God. That's what this church is about, and it is about that for all people. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I just wanted to explain that real quickly because I know that in many, many ways we do not resemble other LGBT affirming churches. And, you know, some people, frankly, are turned off by that. Well, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry that you're turned off by that. You know, it's, it's kind of like when people of color began to develop all these awards that they could give to black entertainers and black performers and stuff. And the reason for that being that black entertainers and black performers were not getting the recognition in the mainstream. But what we ought to be striving for is a society where everybody gets recognized regardless of their race, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their primary language or their, their nation of origin, what have you, so that we don't have to have black award shows. You know what I'm saying? That's what we ought to be striving toward. Well, that is what I am working toward for LGBT people. We're not about trying to create a black award show or an LGBT church. No, we're trying to just simply take our place and stand in our place in the church, period. You yeah. follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of what we preach, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, is followed by people in the mainstream, non-LGBT people. We have a lot of non-LGBT folks who are part of our church online and we're thrilled to death. I'm going to tell you a little secret. The majority of the people who support this ministry financially are not LGBT. They're straight. And they love our message and they love our church because we are a church for all people. Amen. That is our goal. Amen. Amen. And you say, well, why do you preach with fire? Why do you spit and sputter when you preach? I'll tell you why. Because I have the same fervor, I have the same passion for my message that I'm preaching as the preacher down the road does. And I'm sick and tired of LGBT uh, affirming preachers. We're supposed to be all sweet and we're supposed to talk nice and we're supposed to we're not supposed to preach with passion we're not supposed to preach with fervor we're not supposed to preach with emotion because after all who oh, that reminds me of of what i grew up with well grow up and get you a pair 
Because, honey, we need to be able to stand on the same ground they stand on. If they look at us and say, yeah, those churches over there, you'll notice when they preach their message, they just get up there and squeakily like a little scared mouse present it. You follow what I'm saying? No. No, honey, when you come hear our message, we're preaching it with every bit the same fervor and the same fire and the same passion and the same enthusiasm and the same emotion as any other preacher in the church. Because like I said, we're not about creating some kind of a niche church. We're about taking our place in God's church and not allowing anyone to set us aside. And that includes allowing the anointing to flow. That includes allowing the gifts of the Spirit to operate. And uh, I'm going to tell you, we've got a lot of people. I've had a lot of people out there send me messages over the years and tell me, said, man, I'll tell you what, when I watch your videos, I feel the anointing. We had a guy, a, a Pentecostal preacher from the, one of the largest oneness Pentecostal denominations in the world. He called me on the telephone one time. And this is years ago. We hadn't been in Dallas but for what? Maybe a couple, a few years at that point. And actually at that point, we were not even doing our services uh, on video. We were only doing our services on audio at that moment in time. And this preacher called me up and he said, my name is so-and-so and I am a pastor of a, he named, I'm not going to say the de denomination, I don't want to create any potential problems for him, but in, it was either Virginia or West Virginia, I can't quite remember, but I remember, I believe it was one of the Virginias. And, uh, and I kind of tightened up for a minute because I halfway expected this man was going to try to lambast me, you know, and, and and come out with, you know, why we were wrong and blah, 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 blah. And I kind of tensed up for a second, waiting to hear all the negativity start to flow. And he said to me, I just wanted to call and tell you, we support you 100%. He said, my wife and I have been listening to your sermons online and he said, and my wife, man, the first time she looked at me and said, there ain't no way in the world this man could have the anointing of the Holy Ghost that he's got if he were not speaking the truth. Because the anointing doesn't flow when you're lying, when you're telling a fib. And he said, we just wanted to call and tell you that we think what you're doing is wonderful and we support you 100%. I almost passed out. Folks, this ministry is followed. I found out, I, I, kind of accidentally, to be honest with you, but I found out that some of the biggest names in evangelical Christian circles and apostolic circles follow our ministry online. And uh, again, you know... I wish I could name these people, you know, because, you know, name dropping is fun. You know, it's always wonderful to be able to say, this great, you know, well-known preacher follows us online and that well-known preacher. But I don't do so because I believe it's wisdom. I don't want people hearing about this. I don't want you run around telling others about it. And then this poor person winds up being lambasted by people in his congregation or her congregation or people in his circles or her circles and then they wind up not following us. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because they're trying to quell the, keep the peace a little bit. I don't want that to happen. I want them to be able to listen, to watch, to hear what we have to say. I want them to be able to see the anointing. I want them to be able to see the power of God and the gifts of the Spirit in operation in the midst of us. I want God, in other words, to prove himself and to prove his approval of our ministry 
I want God to be able to do that, and I don't want to put anything in the way that would hinder that. And that's why I don't name these particular individuals. But I guarantee you, I kid you not when I say some of the biggest names in uh, the apostolic church and some of the biggest names in evangelical Christianity are watching our ministry. And uh, there's one preacher in particular who I found out watches our ministry. And then a little while later, I discovered that he actually made public comments in support of LGBT affirming churches. And he wound up with people just tearing him up. I mean, they tore him up. His peers and his supporters, and you know, they just tore him up and he kind of went silent on the issue. But you see, I'm just trying to tell you, this is why we have to be very wise, be very careful uh, not naming these people because we want them to be able to listen and hear and see what we're saying. Amen? All right. When you come to Grace Oasis, when you participate in a church service at the One Church in Christ Jesus, you're not walking into a gay church. You are walking into a One God, Jesus name, apostolic, fire-filled, Holy Ghost anointed church. That's what you're walking into. It just happens to be a one God, Jesus name, fire-filled, Holy Ghost anointed church that is welcoming and inclusive of all people. Amen. Amen. Because unlike many in our movement who believe that salvation is at least partly our responsibility, it is at least partly dependent upon our works, and our ability to maintain this arbitrary asinine standard that they've established concerning the way you dress and the way, you know, which cracks me up how these standards are things that are so easily done. Any idiot can do them. You don't even have to be born again to quit cutting your hair and to wear dresses. And, you, know, you don't even have to have the Holy Ghost to do those things. None of those things require an act of God in our life. None of them. But I'm going to tell you, the hard part of living for God, the hard part of being a Christian, is doing the stuff that does require God working with us to make it happen. Amen. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, so on and so forth. Those things don't happen without the Holy Ghost. But anyway, we don't preach a message of works. We preach a message of of grace amen because when you get into heaven and i hope everybody that watches our uh broadcast i hope every one of you are going to be there with us in god's glory land when you get there you will have gotten there by the grace of god hallelujah amen, amen. all right i'm gonna quit that i, I you know i just felt the need to lay that out because i think a lot of people do not understand how this ministry works. You know, we don't function like many others. Amen.